Hi, my name is Dave Birnbaum, and I work for Immersion Corporation, a company focused on haptic technology. And I've been invited to say a few words about how haptics works from our perspective. Haptics and robots go together like hand and glove. You can see that in this animation where I'm performing a complex telemanipulation task with the amazing Tactile Telerobot by Converge Robotics Group. Providing haptic feedback to teleoperators is essential to allow them to stay in the loop and make fine-tuned gestures in real time. Seamless integration of robots and haptics will allow them to be controlled in VR by the human agent. This, in turn, allows the intelligence of the human to be a data source, but creating a haptic interface can be uniquely challenging because there's no widely available reference device like a screen for visuals or a speaker for audio. It has more in common with robotics in that sense, though it also requires an understanding of the human sense of touch and how we interpret it. The design of a haptic system requires working knowledge of all of these disciplines. You have the physical form of the device, which can include sensors, actuators, conditioning circuits, and so on. Then moving to the right of the diagram, you have software responsible for controlling the haptic output and connecting system events to haptic feedback. Moving to the bottom, you have the design of the feelings themselves. This can be challenging because the lack of a reference device in turn means a lack of standardized tools. Nonetheless, there are some general haptic design principles that we'll look at later in the video. And finally, last but certainly not least, is the human at the top. People bring preconceived notions about what certain feelings and sensations are likely to mean. They also have cognitive and perceptual abilities determined by their bodies, their mental state, and their environment. There is a huge variety of human manipulation tasks, and that doesn't even include other tactile interactions. In general, each one requires its own feature or haptic technology. So if you start a haptics project with a top-down goal of accounting for all possibilities, the complexity and scope of the task quickly becomes overwhelming. Luckily, there are ways of creating effective haptic systems with a bottom-up approach, considering your application and what haptics can do to enhance it. Here are three examples of haptic design guidelines we developed at Immersion. They are attention, information, and illusion. The three images are screenshots of a set of mobile apps that we created to simulate augmented reality experiences. The first one is attention. You're using an attention effect when you use haptics to shift your user's attention away from a primary task and to a new task. In this example, you're fighting robots in your environment and you can feel their footsteps. When you have a robot on screen, its gait can be both seen and felt. So your brain readily interprets a particular haptic pattern associated with the footfalls of that gait. Then, when a robot approaches you from behind, you can feel it even though it's off screen, and your attention intuitively shifts to try to find the new threat. Information effects provide specific, useful, and meaningful information about an interaction. In this example, we created a virtual tower of blocks similar to the game Jenga. Your goal is to remove a block using the simulated robotic arm. The haptic effects are created based on the physics model used in the game, so you can feel how tight or loose a block is before trying to remove it. This works because people readily interpret the robotic arm as an extension of their bodies. We do this all the time. Using a cane, you can feel barriers and curbs. And you don't think the cane is what caused the touch sensation, but instead the object on the ground. Illusions are references to real-world touch sensations. After we created the block stack game, we wanted to know if people could identify materials with the simulated robotic arm. We collected some materials, stuck QR codes on them, which here were converted into gray boxes in software, and used the simulated robotic arm overlaid on the camera feed to probe the materials. When the arm collided with or rubbed against the materials, a haptic effect would play that represented how it would feel to rub that material with a physical probe. Again, we readily understand this effect to represent the material, without the haptic effect even needing to be realistic. In other words, the metaphor of the robotic arm helps people sidestep the problem of a limited haptic display and the haptic uncanny valley. Here's the haptic stack. At the hardware layer, we have the actuator. In robotics, actuators move parts of the robot, but in haptics, they generate touch sensations, whether it be forces for the joints or tactile effects for the skin. Those need to be driven by an amplifier. Above that, we have the software layer. Some mobile platforms like iOS and Android have haptic APIs for vibration effects that are readily available to developers. 
this is a great place to start getting your feet wet with haptics. Finally, we have the design layer. Creation tools are often tailored to the implementation of the lower stack levels. However, design patterns and principles can often be found alongside the documentation of the haptic API you're working with. It's also worthwhile to do some research on the expectations people bring to a haptic interaction, as discussed earlier. The call to action to developers who want to advance the haptic arts is to create portable, standardized layers of the haptic stack. This will lead to an accretive haptic ecosystem. It will also let researchers and prototypers spend more time refining their use case and less time rebuilding well-known haptic architectures. Thanks for listening. You can feel free to drop me a line on email or find me on LinkedIn. Also, a great place to get involved with the haptic community is the Haptics Industry Forum. We're a relatively new consortium of haptic professionals working across industry and academia at various levels of the haptic stack. Find out more at hapticsif.org.